Hey everyone, it's Steve Petucci here. Hope you're all doing well as we spend time indoors and in quarantine like I am right now. As you may have heard, last week the Canadian federal government put into effect a wage subsidy available to employers who are either incorporated, are nonprofit organizations, or are charities. After going through what the government has said about this wage subsidy so far, I can definitely tell that this plan was put together very fast and there's a lot of things in here that don't make much sense. For example, why are the self-employed or partnerships being excluded from this subsidy? They have people on payroll as well. Of course, we know the government did not have a lot of time to put this one together and this will likely have repercussions that someone will have to deal with later on. But trying to keep political comments aside, I want to clarify how this subsidy works and more so show how you can apply the wage subsidy properly using QuickBooks Online, which is a very popular online accounting software which many use to run payroll for their employees. So when this wage subsidy first came out, there was a lot of people in the news, including accountants, saying that this subsidy was just a crafty tax deferral scheme that the government concocted whereby employers would be allowed to reduce the income tax taken off employees' paychecks by 10%, remit it to the government, and then the employee would end up paying the tax that should have been remitted when they file their 2020 tax return in April 2021. This is not correct. This is how it actually works. What first happens is that the employer calculates source deductions on employees' paychecks like normal. Then, the employer submits these source deductions to CRA, but instead of paying the government the full amount, they are allowed to reduce the payment by 10% of the employee's gross pay. We'll see an example of this shortly. The important thing to stress here is that the employee's income tax amounts deducted do not get affected. That is, at tax time, their T4 for 2020 should not show a 10% underpayment of income tax deducted at source, meaning that they will not owe any additional tax when they file their return. At the same time, since the employer is a direct beneficiary of this subsidy, they will need to report the subsidy as income and pay tax on it. The employer's reporting requirements for claiming the subsidy received is still to be determined. There are some important general rules we need to keep in mind here related to this subsidy. First, it applies to Canadian Controlled Private Corporations, or CCPCs, non-for-profit organizations, and charities who have active payroll accounts with the Canada Revenue Agency as of March 18, 2020. So if your corporation decided to open up a payroll account today after watching this video, you unfortunately are not entitled to receive the subsidy. Also, this subsidy is equal to 10% of the remuneration paid between March 18th to June 20th, 2020. As many get paid bi-monthly, meaning your next pay run would go from March 16th to 31st, this March 18th start date means there is some prorating you'll need to do, which we'll see momentarily. There is also a maximum amount claimable for this subsidy. That is, it is the lesser of $1,375 per employee or $25,000 total for each organization. So if you have five employees, for example, the maximum subsidy you can get is $6,875. Also, if you own more than one corporation, you do not need to share the subsidy between all of your corporations as if you would with the small business deduction, for example. And lastly, if you own your own company and pay yourself a salary, you are also entitled to claim this subsidy on your pay as CRA's guidelines give no indication that related or connected individuals are excluded. So let's walk through a quick simplified example. Let's say Sharon is the only person on payroll for a CCPC operating in Ontario. 
Between March 16th to March 31st, Sharon made a gross salary of $2,000. Now, if we prorate this salary by the number of days in between March 18th to March 31st, her salary during this period is $1,750. Normally, on a $2,000 salary, the source deductions, calculated using CRA's tax tables, would be $286.33 of income tax, $194.68 of CPP, including both the employer and employee portions, and $75.84 of EI, also including the employer and employee portions. The total deductions would be $556.85. However, instead of remitting the full $556, the employer would instead remit $381.85. That is, they would subtract 10% of $1,750, being the remuneration applicable after March 18th, from the $556.85. This $175 subsidy should be recorded in the employer's books as a reduction of income tax remitted, but as I said earlier, the employee would still show $286.33 of income tax taken off their pay like normal. CRA does indicate that CPP or EI deductions cannot be reduced by the amount of the subsidy. Now, there are a couple considerations we need to keep in mind with this subsidy. First, it's really important not to lose sight of how much of these subsidies you end up pocketing. As I said earlier, there are maximum amounts each employer is allowed to receive. If you go over these maximums, you will be faced with under-remitting the appropriate amount of income tax on payroll, which will result in heavy fines. What you should consider doing, if your accounting software doesn't track this for you, is either keep an Excel spreadsheet totaling your subsidy amounts you're pocketing from March to June, or track the subsidies in a separate income account in your accounting software, so it will become apparent to you once you've reached your maximum. Secondly, this 10% subsidy is taxable income to the employer. So what this means is that there has to be some way for CRA to track the total subsidy that each employer received. I would have first thought that the CRA would get crafty and change up the PD-7A forms that everyone uses to pay their payroll remittances. However, as of today, there have been no changes to the standard form, either in paper or online. Therefore, I anticipate that this subsidy will be a reportable item when employers file their T4 information return, since they will find a discrepancy between the deductions that should have normally been remitted and deductions that were actually paid, which would be less. These reporting details are still to be sorted out, but this is my best guess right now. Thirdly, if you don't feel like playing games with your payroll store deductions right now and just continue on with business as usual, the government luckily understands this, so they will allow you to request the subsidy to be paid at the end of the year, or you can have it transferred to your 2021 remittances. How these requests will work with CRA are still being figured out. Lastly, we are already approaching the end of March, which means you need to figure this payroll situation out pretty soon. If you are using software platforms like QuickBooks Online Advanced Payroll with WagePoint or Payment Evolution, these providers have already sent emails out to their users letting them know how to activate the 10% wage subsidy calculation when running your next pay run. However, if you run QuickBooks Standard Payroll, there is some manual work involved, but it's not that bad. Since there are many users who use QBO with Standard Payroll, I'll now demonstrate how to apply the wage subsidy in that environment. So I'm currently in the Employee Center by clicking the Employees tab on the left. I have my one test employee here who earns $4,000 per month or $2,000 bi-monthly like I just showed in the previous example with Sharon. I'm going to click Run Payroll on top. 
And my pay run is covering March 16th to 31st to be paid out on the 31st. I'm going to click Preview Payroll. And I'll click the pencil button. Now notice under employee taxes, I am able to adjust my income tax amounts, but I urge you do not, I repeat, do not change any of these amounts. Instead, we're going to hit OK and click Submit Payroll. and hit Finish Payroll. Now I'm in my Payroll Taxes screen. I got here by going to Taxes on the left and selecting Payroll Tax as such. If I click Pay Taxes, it will say that my source deductions for March is $667.88, but this does not include any subsidy amount yet. From the previous example we walked through, we determined that the subsidy amount was $175. So if I want to reduce my source deductions here by $175 without changing my employee's paycheck, what I'll need to do is go back to Payroll Tax and click this thing that says Enter Prior Tax History and then click Add Payment on the top right. We'll indicate our adjustment date range to be March 18th to March 31st. Our payment date will be April 15th, which would be the day we would submit our source deductions. And we can leave a note here like 10% employer subsidy on $1,750 payroll with my calculations. Next, I'm going to put in my income tax amount as $175 since CRA did say we should deduct our income tax to account for the subsidy. Then I'm going to click OK. Now that I recorded this, if I go back to my Payroll Tax tab and click Pay Taxes, I'll now see that my remittance amount has decreased by $175. And if I click on the details, I'll see that my income tax amount has decreased. So once we want to pay our source deductions, you would click Record Payment on top, select OK in this example, change my payment date to latest, and click Record Payment at the bottom. Now if we go to our chart of accounts, my last step is to remove the $175 sitting in my payroll liabilities account and put it to income by just doing a journal entry. So I will click new, hit journal entry, Put my date as April 15th, debit your payroll liabilities, federal taxes account by $175, and credit a new income account like CRA subsidy income COVID-19. As I said earlier, you should make a separate income account in order to track the total subsidies received easier. And you can just put a description like 10% percent 
wage subsidy, March 16th to 31st payroll. And then you would click save and close. So that's how you apply the 10% wage subsidy using QuickBooks Online standard payroll. From everyone here at P2C Tax, please take care of yourself and others and have a great tax season.